Hi there Booktube, it's close to the end of September and October means Victober, about which I'm very excited. So I'm trying to kind of clear the decks a bit before before October starts. So you're getting a September wrap up a little bit early and slightly different from my usual delights and discoveries because I finished 18 books in September. That's a lot even for me. And you might ask, Rose, Rose, what were you thinking of? Why did you read so many books? Because, of course, September was Shorty September and um, hosted by um, Bertha Pastori Time and Heather the Soggy Expat book, book Nerd and it, all about reading lots of short books. And Heather, who the wicked, wicked creature, created a really adorable zine um, to go with the readathon and it's got like, like little pictures for each of their funny prompts and a, a, a space to write in the book that you read for that prompt and you know there were 12 spaces so I had to read 12 books for Shorty September so let's give you a kind of a whistle-stop tour through the ones that I read and I, I'm keen to do this because actually they were 12 really interesting and different books and some of them are ones that I would recommend to anybody. Some are ones that I would recommend highly to the, the right reader. And I'll try and explain why and so you'd know if that's you. And some that were intrinsically really interesting, but, you know, perhaps most people wouldn't want to read. So first of the prompts was um, Spanx, a book with magic or witchcraft. And the book I read for that was this one. Pedro Paramo by Juan Rufo. Now, do you ever read a backlist book and find yourself thinking, why, why hadn't I heard about this book before? You know, why is it not one that's kind of constantly spoken of? And that was exactly my experience with this book. Now, I think if I lived in um, a Spanish speaking um, country, this might have been a book that um, I was, you know, very familiar with. But as I don't, um, it wasn't. So this was published in 1955. Juan Rufo only is a Mexican author. He only published two books, this um, short novel and a book of short stories. But this is an absolute blinder of a book. Um, it fitted the prompt because it's about... Uh, kind of like a ghost town and when I say a ghost town I mean a town that is actually populated predominantly by ghosts by spirits now he um and it, he uses that to discuss or, or I don't know sort of raise themes around um Mexican kind of culture and history and um the 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 wars of the times and you know i mean like early 20th century you know uh, it it and the behavior of um sort of bigger landowners and you know the the their relationships with the people that work for them and um the the sort of the local town and machismo you know the the the, the way women were used and yeah so much in this book but also the style is just um well, at the time would have been, I think, quite groundbreaking. It um, jumps back and forth in time. You, you have, you're often not quite sure who's speaking. You, you, you very often don't know whether they're alive or dead. Um, you know, or whether they're 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 dead now, but are talking about a time when they were alive. You know, um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, identified it as a you know a book that enormously influenced him. And whereas I think you know we see his books a lot um we 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 if we miss out on this one and i would urge you if you're interested in latin american um uh literature to um pick this one up i'm very very glad that i did problem number two is hoochie daddy shorts a spicy read or revealing gospel biography and i found a spicy read to read and that's The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filior. It came out in 20, 
2020, 21, something like that. So, you know, it's relatively recent. Um, I'd heard a few people kind of infuse about it. Um, it's a collection of short stories. It's short stories in which I would say people's sort of sex lives are central to each story without it being. It's not full of kind of like, I was going to say second rate sex scenes. I mean, I tend not to greatly enjoy. Um, I think it's hard for authors to write really successful sex scenes. That's what I'm trying to say. This is about more about people's sort of sexual relationships. And it's vivid and funny and sad in different proportions in each story. I really liked it. It's not um, it wasn't a five star read for me because it's short stories and uh, what I found, uh, as I so often do in a really good collection of short stories, is that I'd just be really getting into a set of characters and really want to know more about them. And that would be the end of that short story. And I'd feel a bit thwarted and then have to go on to the next one and get really engaged again. So um, but if you're a short story lover, then this would be a top, top, top recommendation. Now, prompt number um, three Shorty Shorts is a 70s or 80s book. And the book I read for that is the only one that I don't have in this pile because I could only get hold of it as a, as a PDF from um, an Australian library. Um, and it's Logs in the Current of the Sea. And it's a book by, um, uh, well, it, the the sort of person who wrote it down and edited it was um, a, a, a Australian academic um, of German extraction. Um, his name's Koch. And the the book is a recounting of um, a, a, a verbal memoir given by um, someone called Nelly Lufaka, who lived in Tuvalu. So for me, this was my um, scally dangling book for Tuvalu. So, you know, the, the, the first thing I've read by um, a writer from Tuvalu. Obviously, he didn't literally write it, he spoke it, and this other person transcribed it, but, it, you know, it is his words, his words just edited a little for um, from um, audio recordings that, that this, the anthropologist made with, with Nelly. It's short, it's very interesting as a document about life in Tuvalu in um, Pacific Island in the sort of 1940s, 50s, 60s. Unless you are obsessively interested in Tuvalu or doing a read around the world um, challenge as I am and want to find, you know, something from Tuvalu, and this is just about the only thing available, you know, in English that you can read. Um, but if neither of those things apply, then I wouldn't worry about reading it. It's you know, it's not it's it's not that well written. It's just intriguing. Unlike talk about things being well written, my book number four, which was for the prompt um, half and half shorts, uh, a book that was all, is also been made into a movie, and I read for that or reread rather a month in the country. Now I, this came out in nineteen eighty, and I read it around then, and then few years after that I saw the film um, it, with um, uh, Colin Firth and Kenneth Branagh early film ro role for both of them and it's a book that had kind of stuck in my mind but it came back to the fore because it's become a bit of a um, it's one of those backlist books that's that's burst back up into um, into into the scene um, recently and rightly because it is a wonderful book. This is the book um, that of all these books that I that I read for Shorty September, I would recommend for any reader, you know, uh, anyone, I think, you know, whereas, say, you know, uh, this one, um, brilliant, wonderful, bit odd, bit magical realist, you know, if that's not your bag, don't read it. I can't imagine anyone not, not loving this novella. It's set in Yorkshire. It's um, set just after the First World War. It's about sort of post-traumatic stress and recovery. It's also about community. It, um, it's, it packs so much into a short space, which is the essence of, of, of Shorty September for me. And um, if you haven't read it, get it and do. 
Prom number five is Mum Shorts, a comfort read. And my comfort read might not be everyone's comfort read, but it, it, it definitely qualifies as a comfort read for me. And that was this book, English Novelists by Elizabeth Bowen. Now, this is a book from that was written during the Second World War and published immediately afterwards, 1946. And um, a, a series of books was published um, that were known as Britain in Pictures. And the, the, the kind of, they were a wartime project to, I don't know, keep national spirits up, I suppose, and to reinforce the sense of national identity at a time when Britain was, you know, at war and at threat. And this one, English novelist, is written by a novelist that, uh, who, who, uh, whose work I love herself, and that's Elizabeth Bowen. And it's like a kind of um, uh, uh, an illustrated um, run through of the history of the English novel, basically. And, um, you know, it goes through from the earliest ones um, through to, um, you know, Daniel Defoe and Samuel Richardson and then on to Jane Austen and um, then, you know, the great Victorians. And she winds up um, writing the last two um uh, English novelists that she writes about are Ian e. Forster and Virginia Woolf, who are the two from sort of the the recent past that she she felt were sort of most worthy of 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 sitting in the company of um, Thackeray and Gaskell. Absolutely comfort, short, fascinating, a comfort read for me because it's about a topic that I love. If you can get hold of a copy, I would recommend it, but. Um, I'm not sure that it's available other than secondhand. It's the sort of thing that might be on archive, um, the you know the internet archive, something like that. Perhaps I don't know. Prompt number six: ripped shorts. That's a mystery or slasher. Well, that was my excuse for getting to my first go at reading manga, and this is Death Note by uh, Tsugumi Oba um, with art by Takeshi Obata. Now, I enjoyed this. I think I my impression is, is that this is a good example of manga. I don't know if it's a typical example of manga, but, you know, it, it was propulsive. The I absolutely loved the artwork, um, the 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 um, the story is that this sort of um, I can't think what you what you call them, but um, uh, 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 a Shinigami, a death god, kind of drops their death notebook and a uh, 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 sort of college, high school, you know, upper end of high school student picks it up and they can use that to um, to kill people and they embark on as a on a sort of serial killer spree of killing bad guys. Um, and I love that the, the pictures of the Shinigami in particular. Um, and the sort of juxtaposition between him and this sort of rather conventional and slightly moony youth, but who, you know, takes on this role as a, a avenging angel, as it were. So would I read a load more manga on the strength of this? Maybe not. I, I It didn't have perhaps the emotional life that I tend to look for um, um, in things that I read even when they're, um, you know, comics, graphic novels and, 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 and memoirs or whatever. So, so, but I'm glad I read it. And it, it, I don't think it'd be the last manga that I read, but it, I don't think it's going to, it hasn't made me feel like, oh, that's got to become a big chunk of my reading. You can tell me why I'm wrong if you like. Next prompt, Elizabethan Shorts is a historical read. And I read for that, um, Julian of Norwich, A Very Brief History by Janina Ramirez. Now, I had a wonderful time reading this, but this is one where I would say, you know, it's going to be of interest to you if you are interested in um, fascinating um, English mystics. And, uh, you know, Julian of Norwich was, was the author of the first great work of English prose okay and people still read it 
and I've got a copy now so I can read it properly rather than just dip into it. Um, Ramirez is fascinated by Julian of Norwich and she expressed her fascination to me um, in um, her book Femina about um, which looked at sort of medieval women through works of um, through objects and, and, and works of art and I read that last year and was really you know engaged with it and that made me want to know more about Julian of Norwich as did reading um, for thy great for thy great pain, have mercy on my little pain, which is a is a lovely short novel, which um, are about Julian of Norwich and um, and Marjorie Kemp. Now, as I say, it, it, this gave me the most enormous pleasure, but I'm not going to keep talking about it because I think it's probably probably a bit of a niche interest. Although you know, fascinating. Why shouldn't we be fascinated by medieval? English women, mystics, religious figures that get walled up in a cell and write an extraordinary spiritual sort of autobiography. There we go. Have I sold it to you? Maybe not. Prompt number eight is Lederhosen, a translated book. Oh, now this is another one that is a strong recommendation for to for, for anyone. I think. And it's Gacha Gocha by Vivek Shanbag, translated from the Canada by um, Srinath Perro. Now, Canada is um, one of the sort of important but um, minority Indian languages, you know. And I, this is the first book that I've read that's been translated from Canada. Um, I have to thank Josna for recommending this book to me I think and in relation to um, Lit with Indian Lit which is a readathon in another bit of the year earlier in the year um, to encourage people to read Indian literature written in Indian languages rather than Indian literature written in English and particularly from um, perhaps languages where we haven't read something translated from that language before because you know it, it, it's, a, it's a window into a different way of thinking sometimes isn't it this is a cracking little book about a family in um, Bangalore and they kind of come into money, no, earn money through a business run by one family member. And it's about the impact of money on people and the impact of having money on a family and how it sort of distorts your relationships and your behaviour and so on. It's, it's short, energetic, funny, full of ideas um uh, with a brilliant twist at the end um yeah read it read it it's relatively relatively recent but not or relatively recently translated although so i think yeah i think it came out in um uh the translation came out in 2016 um but the original was written a few years yeah it's a few years older than that well how are we doing Ooh. 18 minutes, better go faster. Pedro Pascal shorts, an unexpected purchase. Well, this was The Low Voices by Manuel Rivas. It was an unexpected purchase because I've heard of him as a poet, but I, I wasn't really aware of him having written any books. And this is a memoir, but one of those memoirs that's slightly fictionalised, a bit like the way Annie Erno writes, say. And um, uh, it's, it's about growing up in Franco, Spain. And a good read. Not it's not the style is interesting because in some ways it's slightly sort of dry and distanced, um, and almost inconsequential. But actually, by the time you finish it, you've got just a real sense of what it was like to grow up under Franco. Um, at a point when the world was changing, you know, um, you know, in the nineteen sixties and seventies, but Franco was trying to stop things changing in Spain so you know there's it's a sort of like this sort of shadow that hangs over the young people growing up in Spain at that time and Rivas you know really conveys that um very effectively so I was very glad to have read it but it's not it's not a sort of a, a jump up and grab you kind of book it's it's it um it's a a, a slow burner um and oh I should say it was translated from the Galician by Jonathan Dunn and um, it was, uh, it's a few years old. I think it ca it was, yeah, came out in 2016. There we go. 
think it's the first book I've read that's been translated from Galician. So that's the first two. That's good. Um, and it was an unexpected purchase because I just sort of, I saw it in a second-hand bookshop and, 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 and picked it up. Now, the next book, oops, is for the prompt Dolphin Shorts, a book with water on the cover. And uh, there is indeed a glass of water, as you can see. But I wanted to read this because um, uh, I read an, an article in The Guardian, or the observer, one or the other, um, uh, about a year ago, that talked that that listed fifteen brilliant short books that everyone should read. You know that sort of article. You know, and about half of them I'd already read, and half of them I hadn't. And I kind of made a mental note of all of them so that if I came across them secondhand, I could pick them up and read them. And I read two this short, shorty September. Oh, this is by Bruce Chatwin. Now, Chatwin is a wonderful pro stylist. I really enjoy his work. Um, he's done some brilliant travel writing um, and also one of a, a, a favourite novel of mine, On the Black Hill, um, about two brothers on the borders of Wales. That's sort of dark and beautiful. This is um, a fascinating little novel. And... It kind of quite highly stylized, I suppose. It's about a, um, uh, a, a collector of porcelain who's living in um, uh, ends up well, is living in in in, in what was the um, uh, you know Habsburg, you know, and, uh, you know and, uh, so, oh got stuck for my words there all of a sudden the 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 um the you know in Czechoslovakia before the first world war and he is a collector of porcelain and then you know the war happens and he ends up sort of in behind the iron curtain as it were and having to try and preserve his what is to him very precious collection of mice and porcelain that he sees as more precious and more beautiful and more important than um, uh, anything else in his life. It's about obsession, I suppose. Um, it's about the city of Prague. It's about um, art and what it means to us. It's about relationships. It's about a very strange man. Um, and it's actually based on a real life story. Um, and the, the, the real life story is even, you know, actually, when I read that, it, it, it's even more fascinating than, than this novel, because um, the real life collector that this is based on um, actually did manage to squirrel away their porcelain. And it was recently rediscovered after Chatwin had um, uh, written this book and then because he died just after he wrote it. So um, there's like it's like there's a continuation of the story in real life um, that's different from the his fictionalized version. It's um, I would recommend it, but. I wouldn't say, you know, whereas I've heard people describe this as Chatwin's finest book and one of the you know best short novels, you know, in existence. It wasn't that for me, but. You know, if you've read it and think differently, tell me why. And two to go. Prop number 11, Lodge Shorts, a book you bought because you were trying to look cool. Well, I didn't buy this. I was given it by Bob the Booker, but I did make it did make me feel like perhaps I was cool because it's um, newly published, end of July, um, brilliant contemporary fiction absolute another absolute cracker from my point of view but one that I recommend with reservation because this is a truly odd 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 book that is I found wonderfully fun and just overwhelmingly full of ideas and feelings and um uh inspired kind of writing um but I think some people will read it and think, what on what on earth is this? And why did Rose suggest I should read it? So, you know, that's my that's my health warning. But why this made me feel extra cool is I, I made a short video just about this book, a standalone review and uh, stuck it up on BookTube. And Isabel Weidner, the author, um, came and commented and said she really liked my take on the book. So, um, you know, obviously that left me feeling super cool and 
you know, do do read it if you're an adventurous reader. And now the final of my 12, The Mezzanine by Nicholson Baker. Now, this is for denim shorts, a modern classic, because this is considered a sort of a a, a modern American classic of, of, of short story writing. And it is modernist in the sense that it's um, a stream of consciousness writing, but a, 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 but a modern one, not, you know, back in the 20s and 30s. It was um, it was published in, let me tell you, 1988. There you go. And um, this book. I mean, it's short, but nevertheless, it basically takes place in the length of one escalator ride, you know, or walking across the lobby and taking an escalator to the mezzanine in the office building where the um, the narrator works. And the whole of the book is his thoughts as he goes up that escalator. So you see what I mean about it being like modern, modern classic. Um, it's it's sort of uh, hyper stylish and um it is funny i don't think it it wasn't to me as funny as perhaps the um the 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 blurbs might make make out you know people pe- you know people describe it as a salmon rushdie said it was a seriously funny book well it was a funny book but it it's slightly more a triumph of style over substance for me i mean you know by the end you could be a little irritated by it on the other hand it is a devastating critique of kind of modern life and um uh yeah the the way we live now or the way we were living in the 80s put it that way and um it's it's uh yeah it it uh, well i suppose the other thing i would say about it as from my point of view is it also reflects um how much attitudes to women and relationships have changed um and women in the workplace have changed since the 1980s when um Nicholson Baker wrote this because I think there are you know there are things in this book that you you would not get away with now even though some of the behaviors that um and attitudes it describes are still live and well in in plenty of people's heads but um so there we go so that was my 12 brilliant shorty September books all of which I enjoyed, all of which I think are worth reading, but some get a sort of a, a, a top top billing, and and the my sort of added levels of enthusiasm I would say would be um, where are we? These ones, these four. There we go. Uh, did you have a good short of September? I'd love to hear. Recommend me a brilliant short book as good as one of these four that I can read next September.